Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is going to be, as you can tell by the title of this video and the slide that is up right now, my US Winter Forecast 2019-2020 full breakdown. And yes, I have made uh, one, uh, two prior before this and now this will be kind of like the updated version. Uh, we're getting closer obviously to winter as we progress. We are, uh, as of recording, the 11th of uh, September, <clears throat> and this will be released on the 12th of September, so it does not really matter, um, you know, when I record this as it would for like, a snowstorm, since this is extremely long-range, things won't change overnight. However, let's just get into this. Consider subscribing to this channel, consider liking this video, consider leaving a comment. I read every single comment. I may not reply to all comments. But trust me, I read every single comment, I get the notification, I go on the video, consider doing so, consider subscribing to this channel, thank you. So the three factors that go into the making of this video is, or are, the ENZO outlook, which stands for El Nino Oscillate. El Nino Southern Oscillation. And this includes the El Nino, La Nina, the Neutral, all sorts of those. If you've ever heard any of those terms, that's what it you know that's what it is so we'll be taking account that plus analogs which is previous winters or you know certain time frames of the year that could uh, affect the other different uh, time frame of that year or a different year I'll, you'll you'll understand everything once we get to it, the part so you'll be fine and then my preliminary forecast <clears throat> which this is vague but i'm talking about my uh, my preliminary fall forecast for temperatures and my preliminary winter forecast that i made uh, like several months back so let's get into this this is just a historical el nino and la nina episodes based on the oni and the oni is a measure of the el nino southern oscillation and basically it needs to be at least three months of 0 0.5 degrees and above, that's an El Nino, or negative 0 0.5 degrees and below, that is a La Nina. Anything in between those, that's a neutral. And as you can see, we were in an El, El Nino pattern last year. <clears throat> if you were, uh, new if you were in this channel last year, uh, if you remember me making these videos, okay, <clears throat> I was uh, not certain whether it would be an El Nino Modoka, El Nino Modoki, or, or would it be a uh, just an El Nino, a weak El Nino, or a neutral? Well, it turned out to be neutral for quite some time to September, but then it turned into an El Nino. Now we're expecting the opposite. We're expecting a, uh, a well, we already did uh, see an El Nino transition into a neutral, and that's like the main difference because last time we did not see that, or the there was less confidence uh, there could have been you know a possible La Nina that's another big thing that changed from last time's forecast La Nina now seems uh, more or less and less unlikely um, or less and less likely or more and more unlikely and <clears throat> basically you can see this graph shows us where the neutral is the neutral is uh, at 60 to 70 percent chance through the fall and the winter yes I am still, uh, you know, leaving room for error if it comes down to November and it's my final winter forecast, the one before winter, and we could be, you know, we could be possibly looking at more of an El Nino or a La Nina. I mean, this is still not set in stone despite it being a long-range forecast, which is counter, you know, may seem... Well, it is a long range, so it shouldn't be accurate, but at the same time, things aren't supposed to change like this so drastically. But <clears throat> we've all seen that in the past uh, change and <clears throat> not prove itself correct. So we'll see, but the main thing to take away from this is an El Nino or an El Enzo neutral is most likely to continue through the winter and fall. So this is a fall, uh, winter outlook, so, you know, <clears throat> we'll focus on the winter aspect, but before we get into what the impacts are of that, I just want to show you the confidence of all the models. You can see some are showing a El Nino um, right there. If I were to quickly just point out for you guys where uh, the qualifications for an El Nino are and a La Nina. There's one model for a La Nina uh, taking it down pretty far to the south, but there are several models that go into the El Nino. Now, um, I don't think it'll be an El Nino or La Nina, but... Um, if it does occur, it would more likely be an El Nino rather than a La Nina, but I think, again, neutral is the most likely. This is, I think, another graph that I just wanted to show you, yeah. Um, t the, the statistical average, just the dashed line, shows you getting up to, you know, a neutral pot, you know, closer to an El Nino at around the November, December time frame, but really just staying constant, if not going a little bit down uh, towards a, a La Nina, but 
it's going to be a neutral pattern at this point. <clears throat> most uh, confidence, uh, most models are showing that, so confidence is relatively high. But again, I'm still leaving room for error. I mean, you cannot make a perfect winter forecast. That just doesn't exist. It's a for called a forecast for a reason. Here's a summary. Enzo neutral conditions are present. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I mean, basically, all you need to know is it's an enzo neutral is present, and that's what it's forecasted to be. And here is what it, the sea surface temperatures are since then. The neutral, the Enzo, El Nino Southern Oscillation Area is in this right here off the coast of Ecuador and Peru. <clears throat> and you can see there's some cooler waters right off the coast, which would be more of a La Nina type. But then there's some warmer waters further over there, which would be more of an El Nino. So in total, despite what you think it may look like, it's a neutral. That's what Noah says it is. And, at, you know, they don't lie about that stuff. Um, Noah doesn't lie. Sometimes they may adjust their forecast to a certain um, point. Uh, but I strongly believe that, you know, in terms of the raw data, <clears throat> Noah is uh, is reliable on this. And you can see that this is uh, not Noah. This is a uh, website called TropicalTidbits.com where I got the sea surface temperatures from. So th that is this is universal. I mean, everybody's seeing this. But um, it's a neutral and... Uh, I could get into a different video why what we see right now is a neutral, not a La Nina or an El Nino, but that's for different reasons. Last year again, or that's for a different video, and then last year again was more of a, you know, which region is warming up because it was possible El Nino Modokai, which is warmer right here and cooler off both sides, but that's not really relevant. So finally, I'm sorry to keep you long waiting this long. We got to the uh, what the neutral winter pattern looks like. You could see very chilly conditions off in into uh, <clears throat> diving down into the eastern U.S. and uh, accelerating off the east coast. Notice how there's a subtropical jet stream bringing in loads of moisture. This again is just kind of the average of what is typical. What is the most powerful setup during a neutral? What kind of dominates the winter? Doesn't mean this is a whole winter pattern. Doesn't mean that you know every day of the winter will be chilly across this area, but. You could see wet and warm. A storm could develop a low a low pressure <clears throat> right up this jet stream, and this could you know this jet stream doesn't need to take this exact path. It could it could it, there's this there's a deviate there's a deviance from the for this uh, several hundred miles to the north or south. And if it takes a little bit northern track, it could get tapped in that colder and produce loads of snow for the northeast. Along this, also Alberta clippers are coming along again all through this region. If there was a more of a La Nina pattern, which was uh, a thought early on in the forecasting period for the Northwest, this would um, <clears throat> bring the jet stream more into a pattern like this. Uh, you know, not necessarily bringing it further to the south, but maybe further to the west. More of a zonal flow, but uh, a little bit further to the south than a typical zonal flow. So uh, that is, you know, I think a La Nina at this point is fairly minimal, but that was the difference that is one of the differences from last year uh, last forecast now we get into the analogs we're looking at march through may 2019 and you may be wondering why am i showing you this year's spring well basically you could see by this analog it is chilly there's blue there's blue colors there's pink colors it was a rather chilly spring for much of the northern country <clears throat> and uh, maybe not the southeast you know not all i'm not saying the whole country was chilly but predominantly chilly or at least neutral so i basically compared it to uh you know similar springs in the past which notice you may you will see um well first i'll take you month by month this is how the march was of this year this is april this is may and now i'll show you a bunch of springs that i compiled together that are similar to this year's you may be looking at this and being like hold up this is not similar at all well um think about it you know it's a bunch of cold springs compiled on the top of each other so it's cold after cold after cold after cold <clears throat> so the ultimate graph will be you know rather biased towards a cold but you can see this is calculated into this and <clears throat> you can see that the increments where the graph goes by is by 0.3 and uh, when it was just for one year it was all you know by one so it, it's all it's all it's all good don't, don't have to stress about that and basically what I did was of all those cold springs how did that how did that following fall turn out or winter i should rather say since this is a winter outlook and you can see november 2018 2014 2009 2003 all those same exact years
the November turned out very chilly. Uh, you could see the anomalies are greater than what they uh, were for the spring at time. You could see this was negative 1.5. This goes down to negative 1.5 as well, but um, it's uh, it's in a much more southern uh, I, orientation, I should say. Uh, way into the south well this was more orientated to the north so there is a pretty direct correlation and you can see December was rather warmer kind of like we saw last year that's why it may sound silly but I think this this winter will be really similar to last year's winter which we usually don't see two winters in a row that are similar or even remotely the same um, we saw that in 2013-2014 uh, 2013 2014 winter and the 2014 2015 winter those two years were pretty similar however um, this year, I think, will be similar to last year's winter. Will it be colder? Um, that's a tough question. Many people want to know if it's going to be colder than last year. Uh, we will, you have to see. I mean, maybe it won't be as drastically, you know, the negative 30s, but maybe over a more elongated period of time, it will be chilly. And you can see January of all these springs uh, equal out to something like this, and then the February and November through March, basically the whole winter time frame, <clears throat> averaged out to chilly uh, winter. So that's kind of, I wanted to point that out because I find that kind of alarming, you know, a cold spring. You, <clears throat> you know, this isn't uh, backed by scientific data, if you will, but it is definitely uh, showing you some, uh, some, uh, some patterns that a cold spring may lead to a cold winter. And that's what we saw. Um, this year and this is basically my previous uh, winter forecast. Well, uh, I did uh, the previous time <clears throat> So this was uploaded I think in July actually now that I think about it July 21st I think was the exact date. How do I remember that? I don't know <laughs> But if we look at this I had brutal cold attacks plus lake effect snow I still think that will be relatively same. I actually increased my confidence on this thing. I think it will be further to the south. Blizzards and cold, I, I do think that as well for the northeast. Um, the south, some big snows possible. <clears throat> Maybe not as south as I thought. But I definitely think that the south will, will be active this year and definitely noteworthy of. The main change <clears throat> that happened uh, was uh, for the, the west, which you could see wet and maybe snowy for the mountains. I think that it will be possibly wet, but also warm for this uh, area. And uh, average could change. I would extend the warm to this dry and hot. Um, maybe not the dry, but just the hot across this area. And maybe possibly even into the northwest as this La Nina, you can see cold plus snowy if a La Nina develops. It most likely won't at this point. The confidence has dropped. So this blue is kind of eliminated. But uh, that's still, again, I want to emphasize that does not um, mean that the northwest will be warm at all times. I don't think it will be as warm as the northwest. Uh, the thing is that it just won't be as chilly as it would be with the La Nina. If, it, if it's a neutral, you know, again, that jet stream's coming coming down in all sorts of fashions. It could be one that's, uh, you know, more oriented to the west and still brings chilly conditions and possibly some snow to on the northwest. I mean, obviously, snow, northwest will see snow, but I'm talking about places like Seattle and Portland, you know, the big cities in the northwest. This was my fall outlook, <clears throat> and I would still say this is the same, and uh, you can see, this is not my fall outlook, sorry, this is my temperature outlook from last uh, last time's uh, winter forecast, and you can see equal chances, I would say, uh, maybe expand the cold and expand the warm and just, you know, diminish this equal chances as things are getting more and more confident. And then this is my final forecast for this uh, this time, this uh, this round. And you can see that uh, I, I have very similar <coughs> things like nor'easters and blizzards for the northeast. I think that will be predominant and pretty noticeable. <coughs> that would, you know, that would take a lot to change my opinion on that. But uh, again, any, you know, it's whether it's a forecast. Brutal attacks of cold, I think it will be very cold across this area, and snowy, I also did this purple color, which is basically the same thing as this pink color, just a little bit less, maybe severe. <clears throat> and you can also see I also did snowy, and <clears throat> I, you know, I don't think it will necessarily be snowy in terms of feet or even inches of snow across right here, the Georgia-Florida border, but snowier than average, that's what I should specify it as. If we look at Florida, Georgia, Alabama, uh, Mississippi, Louisiana, wet, cold at times, 
Um, you know, <clears throat> I think that, you know, maybe some snowflakes, maybe uh, some uh, snow events, especially towards Louisiana, not necessarily Florida, though. Well, uh, wet, cold, or warm, depending on, you know, what, when the, uh, if it's more of a, uh, if it's in a polar invasion, then definitely some of this cold air will penetrate down into the south. If it's more of a uh, pattern for a snowstorm, then some of this warm air could definitely get in there. So that we'll all have to see how that southeast plays out. It's always a tricky zone. And then for the mountainous northwest uh, slash into the plains and into the Midwest, I just did cold. And again, that is because... I did, uh, basically what I did is, uh, you know, accounted for that jet stream is kind of, you know, going all over the place during a neutral pattern. And I think some of this cold will definitely still be felt across this part of the country. Um, you know, quite frankly, we might even see the coldest uh, part of uh, that country. Or, um, we might see that part of the country being really cold like we did last year or it may be shifted to the east that's you know that's not really forecastable at this point out and then you could see for the south i just did chilly um i again this may uh be a little bit off i think that some of the warm air may get in here but definitely also some of this cold air will be able to penetrate in here should have left this as more of an average pattern but i decided to put chilly um we'll see how that works I did average in a certain for this part of the country, but notice how I backed away from that cold from the northwest and rather moved it to the east. I think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's, I'm confident in that. And uh, I did hot and warm for this part of the country. If I were to redo this map now, I'd probably expand it maybe. I did this a couple days ago, so, uh, and it was late at night. But if I were to redo this, I would probably expand it, you know, maybe to this region right there in that blue. Uh, but, uh, that, that still, you know, would not maybe not be right. So uh, that's basically it for today's video. Uh, it was a long one. Hopefully you enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And I'll catch you all guys on the next episode. See ya. Bye.